All right, guys, we got some big games in the early window, late window too. Yup, let's go. Week 11, NFL Sunday preview. We've got, I think, 12 games to go through. Here we go, though. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. normal for basically the rest of the season we'll get them again like week 15 gets a little weird but at least in next week but 13 14 this week should be good though nfl game day morning is at 9 a.m this week um so yeah uh it, it already is um already started that our pregame show the last two hours of it sunday nfl countdown starts right now on espn fans will now and uh fans will pregame both um again streaming service you need peacock and obviously if you don't have the espn too you can't watch fantasy football now but those are your two uh, pre uh fantasy pregame shows getting later in the season obviously with that on uh, Fox and Mo Sunday. Fox and Mo Sunday and Fox and Mo kickoff. So, again, Fox and Mo kickoff is back this week. Ah! There we go. That's back this week. So, again, if you want to see that, you can see that. And obviously, Fox and Mo Sunday as usual. But obviously, they are very minimized slate this week. And the NFL today is also a noon on CBS course, leading you up to their doubleheader, the first they have had since, I think, week, what was it, is eight? Uh, NFL standings, though, um, yeah, getting into that, um, what it's called, Dolphins, of course, sit atop the AFC East, but, again, they're playing the Raiders, we'll see what happens, they're 6-3 and three again, we'll get to that, actually, very shortly, Bills, 5-5, Jets, 4-5, uh, again, we'll sort out that crap later, as well as the Patriots, 2-8, and eight, they are on a bye, we'll, get, we'll actually get to that in a second, too, Chiefs, 7-2, and two are the number one seed in the AFC, again, the Ravens, actually, basically, are the same, but, obviously, with more losses, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of like a tiebreaker, Raiders and Chargers are both, uh, battling out there, and as well, the Broncos, 4-5, and five. Where they went could go up higher, but you never know there. Steelers are not Brit Browns. Again, that's a huge game. Yeah, with the Bengals losing, they're basically out. So, um, yeah, it sucks that Joe Burrow got hurt, though. Uh, Jags, uh, they're in a very tight ship. Same with the Texans, but they can continue to win. They'll be good. Colts aren't going to be doing anything this week. Same thing with the Titans, but I think, yeah, they have a game. Um, <clears throat> Eagles 8-1. and one, They're the best team in the NFL. Of course, we'll get to that tomorrow. I will go I will go through the um, pre preview for that as well. Obviously, the hype video uh, came out yesterday. Either way, though, Cowboys 6-3. and three. Um, If you didn't check out the hype, it's uh, pretty cool. But either way, Cowboys 6-3, and three, obviously. Um, they have a um, game they should win against these dudes, the worst team in the league. But Falcons um, and Bucks, again, they're both a battle after the Wild Cards. Falcons are on a three-game losing streak. Saints, again, they are on their bye week. Lions are the number two seed right now. Niners with a win. Lions lost. Could get to the two seed. Probably not going to happen, though, because, again, they are playing the basement dollars of the NFC North. Vikings looking for their, uh, um, what is called, 6 3 win. They got a huge game on Sunday night. Packers 3 and 6. Um, yeah, yeah they're, they're really bad. Uh, and obviously the Rams and Seahawks must win games for both those teams. Seahawks, because we'll get that again really later. Carl's 2 and 8, and they will um, play an interconference game. Commanders, on the, um, they've got a game against these guys. And yeah, um, I'll go all the way down. Uh, where is it? There we go. The buys this week. Why does it do that? Um, I really don't know. The buys this week, though. Let's go, let's go. That's not it. That's it. Here we go. Buys this week. Patriots, of course, 2-8. They're on their buy. Falcons, oh, my bad. They're on a buy. They're, again, they're with three-game losing streak. Colts and Saints, also both on a buy. Um, Colts, obviously, the only out of these four teams going into the buy on a win. So, again, these two teams, all these teams will be playing sooner or later. Patriots have a massive tank full game against the Giants. I don't know the fact that I think the five are playing at the Bucks or Saints or something like that. Colts, um, they're not playing at the same either the Saints. And that's all I got there. Let's get into Sunday's game, starting off the Raiders and Dolphins. And down in Miami today, we have a pretty big game. I wouldn't say it's too crazy, but yeah, it is. Uh, Raiders are 5-5 five five coming in on a two-game winning streak. Well, of course, their new interim head coach, Antonio Pierce, who, again, looking like Chris Versace back in 2021, rallying this Raiders team that obviously is not that talented. Again, they have some good players, but like, again, not that talented. Who knows? If they pull off this upset against the Dolphins, you really have to start taking it seriously because, honestly, the past week, they've been playing the hell out of um, themselves. Obviously, the Dolphins coming in 6-3 off their bye. They put up a season low 14 points and I know really bad showing in Germany, but they are back again um, on their home grounds where they have not lost a game this season. Their offense has been elite here, except in the first quarter. They've had some troubles there, but not to that I mean, like, again, they scored 70 points here, guys. This team should be fine, but then again, you never know. So, the game's at 1 o'clock on CBS, ML Plus, and Paramount Plus are your streaming services for this game. Announcing it will be... Um, where is it? Uh, yeah, this is so great. Uh, yeah, Kevin Harlan, Trey Green, Melanie Collins, again... 
Maybe another 70 burger. Again, that's what happened last time uh, Kevin Carr and Alphonic fell. Probably not. But this should be a pretty high scoring game. Looking at the map, though, again, um, what is it called? With uh, the Raiders game, obviously it's in blue. Again, you, if you live on the West Coast or in like the um, Mountain West, you'll get um, most of you guys will get this game, which I guess is a good thing. But not in Kansas City, though. That's kind of weird. Um, then, of course, you got the blue. And yeah, that's for whatever reason. Probably to Atlanta. And then, obviously, South, um, Southeastern, whatever you want to call it. South Florida, and then obviously looking at um the weather. Not there we go. Yeah, there we go. One o'clock. It's gonna be supposed to be 80 degrees, a little bit of wind, partly cloudy though. So you should have some decent factors for both these teams. I don't think the weather's crazy bad. It could be better though. Let's look out for the Raiders again. Oh yeah, my bad. The last time these two teams played was actually in Vegas, where the uh, where the Dolphins uh were bailed out on a uh obviously that Ryan Fitzpatrick no look uh, getting absolutely his helmet actually thrown uh, off. 26-25 was the Dolphins. Went for that one. Actually, Jason Sanders with the game winning kick. Miles Gaston also had a 50-yard touchdown. Nelson Aguard, an 85-yard touchdown from Derek Carr. That game was crazy. I expect to actually be see a similar type of game um, today. Well, let's see what happens, though. Let's look at the Raiders starting lineup. And for the Raiders, Aiden O'Connell, quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, of course, now is backup. Uh, Josh Jacobs, Amir Abdul in the backfield. Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, and Hunter Redford now as their third receiver. Michael Mayer, Austin Hooper at tight end. Cole Miller, Dylan Parham, both questionable, though, so maybe Jordan Meredith or Jermaine or Lumor could start. I'll probably say Terry for Jr., though. We'll probably uh, kick over to left tackle if Cole and Miller could not go, though. But as always, Honor James is center. Greg Van Rowan is now the right guard. Don Wagner, K KM Brandon, KM Ma, Wizaw, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Roger Teamer, Brandon Faison, Darren Bowler, so a couple of Washup guys, some other guys on IR, as well as Max Crosby, Malcolm Coots, Tyree Wilson off the edge, as well as Jerry Tiller and Bilal Nichols. What is it called? Um, Divine Diablo, Roberts Flayne, Luke Masterson are linebackers with Nate Hobbs, Corian Bennett, Mika Robertson, and Marcus Peters at corner. Trayvon Morick and uh, Marcus Epps are their safeties. Dana Congressman is their kicker. Their punter is AJ Cole, DeAndre Carter, and Jacob Bombmeyer are their returners. And for the Dolphins, two at quarterback, Reed Mostert, Jeff Wilson Jr. in the backfield. Not him. Okay. Devon Achin, is he supposed to be back next week? Yeah, he's questionable. He might come back. I'm not going to say for sure because we'll have to wait and see, but yeah. Isaiah wins. Zeke Van De Vandenberg and Keon Cross and all on IR with Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, and Hunter Wilson Jr. at receiver. Braxton Barrios, questionable. Chase Claypool and Eric Uzakamara are both out during the fight. It's questionable, so we could see Julian Hill start a tight end. Alec Engel, the fullback, is also questionable. Teron uh, Armstead, Robert Johnson, uh, Robert Hunt, both the ta guards are questionable. So Lesser Cotton and are both out. So you'll definitely see Liam Meikenberg and Lesser Cotton starting, as well as Connor Williams and uh, what is it called? Austin Jackson, the, um, what is it called? Center and right tackle. Christian Wilkins, Raekwon Davis, and Zach Sealer are the, um, the, the tackles of Jalen, uh, Phillips. What is it called? Bradley Chubb, uh, what is it called? Even Andrew Van Ginkel and Emmanuel Ogba off the edge. And David Long Jr. and Jerome Baker are the linebackers with Stephen Howard, Eli Applicator, KL, and Jalen Ramsey at corner. Jalen Ramsey at corner. Javon Holland, Deshaun Elliott are this, um, are your safeties. Jason Keaton Sanders, the kicker, Jake Bailey's a punter, Braxton Barrow scores returners, goes from Cedric Wilson Jr., Raheem Moser could be splitting returners if they, again, if he can't go, and obviously Blake Ferguson is your long snapper. And for the readers, Eden checking to Josh before trying to get um, to his third read as Jalen Phillips will let him know if he has time. Again, that's actually a good thing. I think Jalen Phillips basically tells you, like, if you, like, three seconds, that basically tells you, because he gets to the quarterback in at least that, because... Dang, is this good at getting, um, got, got him, he gets pressure, he gets there quick. So, Aiden O'Connell, again, he can always get through your first two reads, but if his third read, if Jalen Phillips is in the backfield, just get it out to Josh Baker Jacobs. You do not want to just take a sack, because again, you're trying to hit that third read. Devontae for over 100 receiving yards as well, I don't think he's done that in a little bit. <laughs> it would probably be time for that. As well as Daniel Carlson hitting four field goals, that, that doesn't seem like a good thing going against the rate. I don't seem, but again, if they're going to try to, um, what is it called, uh, maximize possessions and also minimize possession for the Dolphins, settling in field goals would actually be a good thing, because again, well, um, three points is better than zero points. Defensively, though, under 12 um, 10 yard plays allowed. Again, they can't give too many big plays. Again, I just not say 12 is because they're going to get big plays on you guys. It's just going to happen. But if you minimize those two, again, the best of your ability, that's one way to do it. Nate Hobbs on, on Tyreek, obviously. Nate Hobbs has been, been a lot better the past couple weeks. Get him on Tyreek Hill. Set a hard edge um, so that Devon, Dion, um, Dion Diallo can uh, just tough for him. Oster. He's actually a pretty um, fast dude. He's really good at, per, um, at pursuing what is called runners, especially when they try to get to the edge. If they can get produce that hard edge with, of course, um, what is called Malcolm Coots and Tyree Wilson. Uh, not Tyree Wilson. Yeah, even him. And obviously, um, what is it called? Uh... Um, Max Crosby, that could really help this defense out. And obviously, keep two under 2.5 yards per attempt. Um, um, yeah, yards per attempt on third down. Um, can keep two uh, over, th yeah, over 2. yards per attempt, um, per attempt on third down. But what I mean by that is obviously, if he can just dump it underneath or that air yards per attempt, that, that's what I meant. Yeah, you don't again. You want him to be throwing it downfield on that third on third down. Don't do not want him again hitting the underneath stuff because again, that's where they are dangerous. Again, the run after catch. Now let's look at the Dolphins. 
And for Miami, bounce back with 20 plus points in the first half. Again, that isn't too crazy for them. Obviously, it's not going to be super easy because it's never easy to score 20 points and a half. But again, they can do that. Get out to a good league. Really good chance they'll win this one. No fumbles on the first drive of each quarter. Please don't. <laughs> it happens. It happens. We just don't have that happen. And obviously, in easy, the Von back in the offense again. If he doesn't go, he doesn't go. But if he's ready to go, get him in the offense. Just don't give him too many carries. Well, that's not even right. You spelled that. I think that's right, right? How do I not have the Von H in his name right? There we go. All right. All right. Now when we look at the what is called defense. Don't give Aiden time to hit his receivers on third down again. If he has those times, he will hit those throws again, even if they're underneath. Again, he'll, he'll find the open guy. Double Hunter on third on second down. Um, Yeah, that's, that's their second down the receiver. Basically, he's really productive there. Don't let him get stuff there. And obviously, squeeze the, squeeze the egg gap with um four tech alignments from Zach, um, Christian and Zach Sealer. Very good run defenders there. But again, if they can produce power and, make, and penetrate, it'll be really hard for that egg gap to really have any sort of room to operate. Of course, that being for Josh Jacobs. Third of the Dolphins, guys. And also, again, the next game here at Titans and Jags. Duval! Yeah, this is the next game where the Jaguars will, um, um, what is called, host the Titans. Of course, the last time these two teams played in Jacksonville, it was for the AFC South, and the Jags, of course, won it and clinched it on a Josh Allen uh, scoop and score. Uh, but, yep, um, they're, of course, coming to this one, at least in 2023. At 6-3, coming off an embarrassing home loss. They have not played well in Jacksonville overall this year. I think, yeah, all three of their losses are there, right? Um, Let me think. Yeah, they, all three of their losses have been there. They're only they've actually only won uh one game there, and that was in week what is it called six against the Colts. You know, blow out win, and they always beat the Colts there. So outside of that one game, this, they have not been good at home this year. Titans are going to get coming this one at three and six. They have lost what is it back to back games. It's been tough for them. Obviously, after that two and two start, they've lost what is it five out of um. Four of the last five. Well, obviously, their quarterback, but it doesn't really seem like it's doing too much, at least so far. Again, their offense is still struggling. But who knows what happens in this one game. Again, it's at 1 o'clock on CBS, Animal Plus, and Paramount Plus. Are your streaming services for this game? Jack, of course, with the family pressure, the um, Texans right on their butt. And obviously, with that win trouncing, they um, they had the hands them back in Jacksonville. I, um, I'm going to just go, yeah. And back in week three, that I get it. They lose this game, it would be big time for um for them again. They don't want to lose this one. Announcing it will be um what is it called? It's Beardy is Adam Archer Leonard Man Runner suit. I think it might it's C game, but whatever, it's decent. Um, what is it called? Looking at the map, it is in uh, green, so you've got um um really just the south southern part of Georgia and the northern part of Jacksonville again, Duval County. Then obviously you have um Tennessee, uh the northern parts of uh, what is it called Alabama. Uh, what is it called? Uh, yeah, Alabama, Mississippi, even, like, you can get it even to Arkansas. And, obviously, you've got whatever this area you want to call that. And the weather, it's going to be 75 degrees, a little bit of wind, and it's always going to be sunny. So, a pretty nice day in Jacksonville for this game. Should sure, 10 well to both these teams, but, obviously, the Jacks got a lot of work to do coming in this one. And for the Titans, we'll have his quarterback, Derek Henry, Tajay Spears, and back with us. Hannah Askins, Kyrus, um, Jackson, Nicholas Petit, Frere, Shaq L. Brown, uh, Chance Campbell, Mike Brown, all in IR. Uh, yeah, Julius Chesson's also on IR. With, uh, Gunnar Hopkins, Tra uh, Traylon Burks is out again, so he's definitely see a lot of Chris Moore and Kyle Phillips as well as again, Nick Westbrook. Chizikako is, um, their tight end. Andre Dillard's out of left tackle. Dylan Rodas will probably start as well as Pete, Peter Strauss, Aaron Brewer. Uh, da um, Dana Brunskill's questionable. Calvin Throckmorton could go there as well as Chris Hubbard at right tackle. Um, Jeffrey Simmons here, targeting Nico Austria across the defensive line with Harold Landry, Arden Key off the edge. As well as Rashad Reaver, Luke Gibbard is questionable as the back linebacker to Jack Gibbons and Aziz Al Shire. Sean Murphy Bunting is out. Roger McCreary, uh, Eric Ga Ga Gayor, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Ga Garor, whatever. Christian Fallen at corner, as well as um, Elijah Molden and Monty Hooker being at safety. Of course, Charlotte Mendes also there. Uh, Caleb Farley's also in the PUP list. Nick Folk is their kicker, their punter is Ryan Stonehouse. Eric Ga Ga Garor, who is this dude? Like, actually, Tasha Spears, the other returner. And, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Morgan Cox is their long snapper. Now let's get um, out of the BS. And oh wait, okay, is he playing? I guess he's playing. Whatever. Um, now let's look at the uh, the 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 Jags. Yeah, yeah, that them. And for the Jags, Trevor, a quarterback, as well as Travis Etienne, and Tank Biggs, Tank Biggs being in the backfield. Calvin Lee, uh, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, questionable. Tim Jones could start with Jamal Agnew, Jalen Moore, Leonard Taylor, uh, Ventrell Miller, and. Uh, Christian Bra um, Braswell all on IR. 
Parker Washington's also questionable. Evan Ingram, Brennan Strange, the tight end. Cam Robinson, Luke Fal um, Walker, Lil, Luke Fortner, um, very bad, Cooper Hodge. He's also on IR. Brandon Sheriff, Anthony Harrison's questionable. Cole Van Lannan, maybe behind him, as well as Adam Gotts, Devon Hamilton, Roy Robertson, Harrison's questionable. So we could see Angel Blackson starting or Fled without a costume more likely. Josh Allen, Tra um, Tra Trayvon Walker, and Shaquille Quarterman off the edge, as well as Devin Lloyd and Voice of Lua Kong at linebacker. Tyson Campbell is out. You'll definitely see Trey um, Hurden, Monterey Brown, and Darius Williams anyway. Obviously, Chris. Um, Clay Brooks still on the um, PUP list. Rashawn, Rashawn Jenkins and Andre um, Cisco are the safeties. What is it called? With uh, Brandon McManus um, Manis is your kicker. Your punter is Logan Cook. Christian um, Kirk and Jonas Johnson are your returners. Russ Magic is your long snapper. Again, Parker Washington is questionable. All right, for things, 30 plus touches for Derek Henry. Get on the football, guys. Your offense is, like, really only good when he's at, out there to so get him the main football. Nine plus starters for Kyle Hoop as well. Again, he's really the only receiver consistently getting separation, at least at this point in the season. Get on the ball. Peter Skrowski, 85% plus while run block win rate. Again, that's not going to be too easy for him, but, again, he had a pretty decent week last week with that. Again, continuing to um, get him in the some advantageous spots. We'll put your offense in a good spot. Uh, and obviously, we'll have his two-plus passing touchdowns, which I think he can do. But, like, again, that's, again, they really, this offense has really only been good when he's done that. So, so like I say, defensively, though, Aaron Landry, 25% pass for one rate. Again, he's got to be able to get that. Like, come on, bro. Amani Hooker, six-plus tackles. Um, Again, being more involved there. And Christian Fulton, 67-7, you're rating against. He, I don't think he's out. No, he's playing. Uh, yeah, again, with uh, Sharmer bunting out there, and he's got to step up. That's got to be him. Now, let's look at the Jaguars. And for the Jaguars, Travis Etienne, 15 plus carries. He definitely didn't get that last that last week. 10 plus touches on um, second and third down for Darius Johnson. He actually looked pretty good last, last week. Gave him a spark. Can, um, can see him definitely being a big impact in this game. Less than three. There's actually a lot on third down. They got to be more better protecting there. More it's just penetration they're giving up. Calvin Lee, 2.5 um, um, yards of separation per route, though. Again, he's just simply not getting open. He's got to give um, Trevor more room to throw the football there. Uh, Jack might get the middle of the field with Phyllis at Lua Kong. Again, he's to make all the tackles in the world, but again, when, with that all in mind, he's got to be able to do that. Obviously, Tyson Campbell, um, what is it called? He's not playing, so I mean, guess my chair, Brown, and, uh, what is it called? Uh, not, I mean, Trey Herndon, those guys are going to have to step in for that. And obviously, under 10 points allowed in the fourth quarter, they got to be good there. Again, they don't want to get absolutely collapsed. Like, they've added a couple, um, in this, again, their blowout losses. That's all right for the Jags, guys. Now, let's hit the Cardinals and Texans. This game should be fun. And the Texans, of course, return home after a wild game against the Bengals. And again, return home to a crowd that is hyped. Because obviously the last time they were here, they were able to get a game-winning touchdown from C.J. Stroud in those final seconds. And he is the bit next big thing in the league, obviously. But it really doesn't mean anything if they fall to a 2-8 Cardinals team that is also um, looking to um, continue their... I won't say hot ways, but they're, they're, they're good play. Obviously, they, they're coming off their second one of the season, stopping a six-game win streak. Behind the Kyler Murray, who, of course, gave him a huge spark. Um, these just two teams played, what was it, back in, tw what was it, 2019, I think? Or am I slow? No, it was, um, they played two years ago, right? Yeah, and the Cardinals absolutely smacked them. That was it for, for Kyler Murray. But obviously, these two teams haven't played here in eight years, so we'll see how that game, this game goes, though. The game's at 1 o'clock again on, t wait, yeah, no, was it eight years? No, it's not, no, they played in 2017 here. Uh, I, I actually remember the game. I think Texans won that. It was one of their only, uh, wins. Yeah, Charles Texans, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Car um, Texans won 31-41. to 41. Tom Savage is actually the quarterback. And, uh, yeah, Blaine Gabbert, he did his things. <laughs> that game was such a tank ball. Either way, though, um, yeah, the game, this game is, again, at 1 o'clock on CBS, NFL Plus, Paramount Plus, our streaming service for this game. Gonna tell you right away, this game's gonna be really exciting. Should be really fun to watch, for sure. Announcing it will be Tom McCarthy, James Lawson, Jay Feely, and Tiffany Blackman. So a lot of people on the call for this thing. Looking at the map, though, it is in yellow, and it's going to be all of Texas, literally all of Texas. Again, the surrounding area as well as Arizona. So, again, with all that being said, that's what I got for this game, guys. Let's get right into the Cardinals starting lineup. And for the Cardinals, again, Kyle Murray, quarterback James Conner. Amari Jim Marcano is also a definitely see a lot of Keontae Agram. Michael Carter, again, was signed to the practice squad, but again, I guess he's on the team now. Marquise Brown, Michael Wilson's questionable. Ronald Moore, um, Zach Pascal is out. Greg Dorch, again, will be a receiver. Uh, Trey Brink, Bride. And G. R. Swamey tight end, D. J. Humphreys, tight, um, Tyson uh, Cologne, both questionable. So you probably see Calvin Beach and Dennis Daly. Those guys can go. Elijah Frola, um, Will Hernandez, Paris Johnson Jr., Zach Ertz, Elijah Wilkinson, Pat Elfline, John Gaines the second, L. J. Collier, Carlos Watkins, Rashad Fenn, um, um, Kyler McMichael, and Bobby Price all on IR. With uh, Xavier, um, Xavier Collins, what is it called? Uh, John Ledbetter is out, so I guess he'll probably see Roy Lopez at defensive tackle as well as uh, Leaky Foe too. Kevin Strong is questionable. Maybe you see Dante Stills, probably more Cameron Thomas off the edge, one of the two. Uh, honestly, probably Dante Stills. Josh Bush, Kaiser White, Dennis Gardner are the linebackers um, with um, Ezekiel Tony very questionable. Uh, Anthony Hamilton Sr., Marco Wilson, Sterling Thomas V, and Garrett Wilson and um, Williams are all at corner. With uh, James, Thoms um, James Thompson and Buda Baker at safety. Matt Praters, they're here. The punters, Blake Gillikin, uh, Greg uh, Dorch is the returner, and Andrew is their long snapper. Matt Hembro is also on IR. 
David Jackson, CJ Stroud, quarterback Damian Pierce is out. You'll definitely see Devin Singletary, Mike Boone in the backfield. Though. Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Noah Brown, special Robert Woods is again healthy for in the slot. Jesse Matthews, Diego Quateriano, DJ Scaffy Jr., Kendrick Green, uh, Jared Patterson, Drew Scruggs, Kenyon Green, uh, uh, Keelan Z Zaire, uh, Hassan Ridgeway, MJ Stewart, and Eric Murray all on IR, as well as Kaimi Fairbairn and the kicker. Uh, Dolan Schultz and Brevin Jordan in tight end. Andrew Beck is their, he's your fullback. What is it called? Charlie Heck again, the offensive lineman is still out. Uh, Larry Tonto, Titus Howard, Michael Dieter, um, Jack Mason, George Mann across the offensive line, Will Henderson Jr., and Dylan Horn, both questionable. We'll definitely see Jerry Hughes, though, again, those guys can't go. Mal uh, Malik Collins, Sheldon Rankin, Jonathan Garner around the defensive line with Christian Harris, Dennis Perriman suspended, that, and the value will definitely play because of Jay Canton and Henry Giotto both being out. Blake Cashman, also a linebacker. Uh, Steven Nelson, Shaq Griffin, uh, Derek Stanley Jr., Tigger Thomas at cor um, corner. I want to call Jimmy Ward and Grayson Arnold, or both, uh, Grayland Arnold, both out. Uh, DeAndre Houston, Carson Jones, feature of the safeties. As well as um, Matt Amendola and Cameron Johnson being kicker punter. Tank Dell is your returner, and John Weeks is your long snapper. All right, we're now this Cardinals offense offensively, obviously, that being uh, Kyler Murray, five points to the design keepers. Again, just again, get, getting him on the edge, stuff like that. Five points for Marquise Brown. Again, he only had like two or three last week. Again, getting him more involved in the offense will make this um, offense a lot more dangerous. And I'll, I'll go give him versatility to do a lot of other stuff that they like to do. Look at the RPOs and early downs, guys. Again, I don't want to make it simple, but three yard plays just won't work. And 20 plus carries for James Conner as well. Um, getting the football. Defensively now, Marco Wilson, um, what is it called? 84% of the snaps in man. He was good in man last week. Got to keep that putting him there. Again, makes it a lot easier on the um, safeties. Buddha in one eye and, um, to limit CD's um, ability to find crossers, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but trust me, he knows what he's doing with that. And double Nico Collins on third down. Again, he, he, you might think he's not their go-to because, again, his third round production isn't that good. But trust me, on those third down plays that are big plays, he's the guy making those plays. Now let's look at the Texans. All right, for the Texans, uh, run a, um, what is it called? Run a couple of more boots, um, um, from the, from the gun off of, um, what is called Devin Runs again. I think again getting a shotgun a little more would be better. Obviously the, the boots I love the boots that run from, from under center, but that's gonna get a little predictable. So maybe run some of that from shotgun. And Robert Woods on um, five plus targets with um a deep um a D a D uh, whatever um whatever <laughs> Um, a depth target of under 10 yards. Again, getting him the ball underneath will really, again, help these receivers get downfield. Texans defense. This is Steven Olsen and Derrickson standing an edge early. They got to be able to make sure they set those. Again, being physical is um, honestly more important than covering guys, at least at this point for this defense. Play off to make sure make a hard for Marcus Brown to climb to the top of his routes. Again, if you play off, again, he's going to have to really get up field fast. So, I mean, Kyler doesn't get canned. And no Kyler's crazy, cra um, crazy scambles like, again, that um, one he had for the first down last week. He'll start to kill you. He'll make plays off of it, and it just can't happen. Now to the Chargers and Packers, of course, big matchup for both, both those teams. Chargers make their first trip to Lambeau, and I think it, this is eight years. Yeah, they haven't been to Lambeau in a really long time. Obviously, the... Uh, the <laughs> And a Los Angeles team playing Green Bay is not fared well. I mean, look at the Rams. They lost like five straight there. It's not good. Uh, but yeah, the Chargers scores four and five coming off a rough loss. Uh, what is it called? Uh, how am I spazzing out? Who like did they play last week? I'm like really spazzing out. Like, what? Let me think. I'm like so brain deadline right now. Like, actually. Oh, shoot. Uh, how am I still not getting this? Who did they play last week? Jesus. Um... It wasn't the... It, it was. Who did they play? Why am I so, like, just not in it right now? Um... Oh, it was the Lions. Duh. Oh, yeah, my bad. They... <laughs> They just absolutely spazzed out, like, me against the Lions. I've just won five touchdowns in the last five drives. Their defense said, screw it, and they just get absolutely just, 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 just torched. And they ended up losing that game on that game-winning field goal. Um, But, again, they're four and five. Uh, probably actually going to lose this one, go to four and six, and then win their next two games. I doubt they're going to over 500 this year, but this is a must win for them. Again, again, four and six, there's really not a chance to get in the playoffs with how many teams are competing right now. Who knows what they'll be at the end of the year, but at least right now they are. Packers on hand, three and six. Um, They're a bad team. Well, you saw last week against the Steelers, they outgained them and still lost. Because, again, they're the Steelers that beat them. But still, uh, Packers, again, they did look a lot better. Offensively, the past few weeks, they've at least been confident. But the, I'll be completely honest, guys. This is going to um, play a pretty um, well-rounded game to win this one. Because their defense definitely ain't going to stop crap. And offensively, I don't know. This Chargers defense seems like it, it might be a little more motivated. But either way, this game's at 1 o'clock on Fox. Fox with NFL Plus or streaming services for this game. Announcing it will be, uh, what is it called? Kevin Cooler, Mark Sanders, is our Oakland on ESPN Radio. It will be Chris Carlin. And Darius Butler, um, yeah, and then I was looking at the map, that's not right, that it definitely isn't right, this is right, it's in, um, what is it called, green, so it's actually, I guess it's Fox's number two game, I really don't know what's going on there, either way, it's in green, again, you get most of the, most of the north, uh, well, mid-northwest, obviously, then you go into, um, Denver as well, and as well, SoCal is getting this game. 
So that, that's pretty interesting, though. Uh, the weather in Green Bay tomorrow, I mean, it, I mean today, actually. It's going to be 45 degrees, 6 mile per hour winds, a little sunny. So, actually kind of generous um, weather for this game. It should be nice, though. Again, these two teams played back in 2019. The Chargers were able to blow them out 26 to 11. Aaron Rodgers looked stupid, and I doubt that that could happen again. But who knows? Let's go right into the Chargers starting lineup. And for the Chargers, Justin Herbert at quarterback. Austin Eckler, Josh McKelling, back to the Isaiah Spiller is out. Keenan Allen's questionable. Darius Davis, the receiver, though, as well as Quinton Johnston. You will not see Jalen Guy in my guess, but he is questionable, so who knows. Mike Williams, Joshua Palmer, both on Irish, as well as Andrew Trainer, the right tackle. Raheem Lane, Chris Ron, uh, um, Amizi, Michi, um, Uzom, Uzodinma, Uzodinma, he, all those guys are on IR. Joan Everts out, Donald Parham Jr. at tight end, as well as, uh, Stone Smart, bro, there's no way you're Stone and Smart at the same time, but yeah, um, he's here. As well as, uh, Rash Rashawn Slater, Zion, uh, Johnson, Will Clapp, uh, Jamari Salier, and Trey Pippins the third, uh, Corey Lindsley is out, I think he, what, what happened to him? Oh, uh, okay. I don't even need to know what happened there. Nick Williams, Sebastian Joseph Day, Austin Johnson across the defensive line with Joey Bosick, uh, Khalil Mack, Justin Hollins, and Tuli uh, Tupelo with the edge. Justin Simmons, um, Hollins sucks. He didn't know he was the Rams starter last year, I guess, uh, and he was not good. Um, yeah, no, no. Well, you, you know he was the Rams starter. He's not good, though. That's all I'll put it. Uh, and he's older, too. Oh, he's not that old. Whatever. Um, what it's called, Michael, uh, uh, yeah, that's the Eric Henderson, Kenneth Murray Jr., oh, yeah, they're both burnt toast to the linebackers. Dan Halley needs to start, he's so good. Uh, no, but yeah, he should start. Michael, um, Davis, um, Jusir Taylor, and Asante, uh, Asante Samuel Jr. at corner, JT Woods is out. Derwin James Jr., Olaya Gilman are the safeties. Cameron Dicker is their kicker, their punter is J.K. Scott, Jerry Davis is the returner, and Josh Harris is the long snapper. For the Packers, Jordan Love, a quarterback, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, both in the backfield, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobb, Jane Reed, and, uh, Dante Van Wicks are not receiver. Um, what it's called, Luke Musgrave, Tucker Crab, tight end, Rashid Walker, Ogden James, Josh Myers, John Runyon, Zach Tom across the defensive line, Luke Tenuta, David Bakhtiari, both on IR, Kenny Clark, TJ Slane, Devontae Wire across the defensive line with, uh, Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, Squashmo, Kingsley, and Nagabor, and Lucas Vanessa off the edge, Devondre Campbell, Quay Walker, Squashmo, and Eric Wilson, a linebacker, uh, Jerry, Jerry Alexander, Squashmo, Corey Ballantyne, Keyshawn Nixon, Carrington, Valentine, and the other corners, uh, Ruby Ford, Dalfo, also Anthony Johnson Jr. could start as well as Jonathan Owens. Free safety, Darnell Savage, Eric Stokes are both on IR, though. As well as Anders Carlson being your uh, kicker, your punters, Daniel Wheelman. Uh, Jaden Reed, Keisha Nixon, your returners, Matt Orzik is your long snapper. All right, Ian, for the Chargers offense, Herbert, 150 was passing here for the second half again, getting that done like, like, like last week, and by again, the, I, I really think in him moving the ball in that fourth quarter is more crucial, but again, it, again, 150 total yards is passing in the first half, the second half. Keen Hunter, 10 of those targets, uh, yeah, you look, this offense is playing well when he's getting the football, and obviously Quentin Johnson with another touchdown, his first the, of his career last week, see if he can get another one. Defensively, under 300 total yards allowed, again, they gotta keep the, the Packers offense at bay, more the fact that, again, their offense is going to run the football, it's kind of hard to do that, because you guys are making up big plays every time. Um, that drive. Sure, Taylor playing a deep zone and um to prevent at getting cooked again. He was terrible last week. Please don't be as bad. Better pursue um pursue and uh, and tackling on blocks from Eric Hendricks and can you um what is called Kendall Murray Jr. Again, they didn't take on blocks well at all. Again, that's how some of those big holes open up as well as they didn't pursue well when they did get beat. Now let's look at the Packers. And for the Packers, Jordan Love under four terrible throws. <laughs> That's just more for, like, in the eye, the eyes, like, holy crap, but those, some of those throws, I, I just want to, like, go out there and punch them in the face. Better penetration from the tackles, one holding blocks in second and short. Again, you look at last week, uh, they tried some dump deep shots, and Jordan Love got sacked sometimes on those, because, again, the, running, the offensive line did not hold anything. As well as, like, again, running the ball game first downs is big, too. And five will get us through to Christian Watson. Please get back into being a decent player. Defensively, though, Rashawn Gary, eight plus pressures, that seems like a lot, but I think he can do it. Jonathan Owens, five plus tackles, again, he, he's got to be more involved with that free safety spot, getting just kind of on an island. Not his best play when he does that, though. Kenny Clark, shedding blocks to the inside of the line, forcing um, runners into Lucas Finesse, who, again, it should be good. Get get him some snaps as well. Again, he's a rookie. Got to see what we can get out of him. I, and, I, and Isaac McDuffie as well, again, because he's a solid tackler. At least from what we've seen of him so far. Now, let's look at the Giants commanders, guys. Holy crap, this is very, very borderline tank ball. And the Commanders, of course, host the Giants, and yeah, um, last year, didn't they win? No, they lost last year here. Yeah, but the Giants, I'll be coming out this game, could be close, uh, why well, I really wouldn't say so, but you never know. Uh, Commanders, again, they find decent ball, but they are 4-6, and six, and they've got a lot of work to do to get back in that playoff chase, and again, they did sell off their two best pass rushers, so, or at least uh, edge rushers, so, like, they're really just starting backups, and that's just not really the best way to win games. But again, again, they're coming to this one of 4-6, they kind of failed last week, uh, um, Sam Howell a really good job hitting the running backs, again, none of the receivers getting open, though. See if that can happen this week against the Giants, see if they nearly get 50 points, give over 600 total yards, and sucked last week, of course, the Giants are basically tanking now, of course, with, um, Daniel Jones out for the season, and no one wanting to watch them play, but... 
Again, last year, the Giants, of course, had that controversial ending where they did beat the Commanders 20-12. to I think Kiba did it over for this one. I think he's going to want to um, sack St. Maul and get another scoop and score like last year. But, obviously, these Giants, they've had success here in the past, uh, offensively for sure. Um, 2021, obviously, not the best ending, but whatever. They've scored oh, at least, I think, 30, something like that um, over the past couple meetings. Um, games at 1 o'clock on Fox, Fox, and, um, Fox Sports app, and Plus are streaming services for this game because, again, the game is on Fox. Um, looking at the announcers for this game, it will be, uh, no, where is it? Um, there we go, Kenny Albert, uh, Jonathan Miller, Shannon Short, um, Shannon Spick, Spick on the call for this game. Looking at the map, um, what is it called, the giant, um, what is it called, uh, it's in blue, um, what is it called, orange. You've got most of the D.C. area and also, um, what is it called, Buffalo, New York, basically that's what's getting this football game. And anyway, it is worth mentioning, mentioning the Giants are going to look to pull out the Br Brums against, um, what is it called, the Commanders, because they, they are, they actually get sweeping, because again, if you don't remember, they did one back in week seven in that ugly 14-7 game. Uh, they, nine miles per hour winds are expected for this game as well as 58 degrees, so, yeah, no, no, uh, no, uh, not, no type of rain or anything like that. And a little human. I'm not even human. So, yeah. Pretty nice temperatures. Again, this game, if you don't remember, uh, eh, probably somewhere back in 2020 when these two teams uh, were basically both tanking. 23-20 was final on that one. The Giants won that one. I'm going to say it's pretty similar there. Let's get into the Giants starting lineup. For the Giants, Tommy DeVito, quarterback Matt Barkley, is back with Tyra Taylor, Daniel Jones, um, Bryce Ford, Wheaton, Dar um, what is it called? Darren Waller, Shane Lemieux, JC Hausenauer, Matt Perr, Gerard Davis, Eric Gregg, Gary Brightwell, Garrett Gano, all on IR. With Saquon, Matt Breed, both in the backfield, not Joshua Corbin, bro. Why is this guy on this team? Or Joshua, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Darius Slayton, uh, Isaiah Hodgkins, Warner Robinson, a receiver, Daniel Bellinger, Lawrence Cager, a tight end, Andrew Thomas is questionable, Evan Neal is out, Tyree Phillips, Justin Peele both start at tackle. I mean, yeah, Ben Bradison will probably start as well. John Michael Smarts Jr. and Mark Lewinsky. Uh, Asia Robinson, um, the Dexter Lawrence, Jihad Ward, the um, defensive lineman, Aziza, um, Azizo Jolari, Kim Thibodeau, Boogie Basham, Mike McFadden, um, and uh, uh, yeah, those guys off the edge, I guess Mike McFadden, Bobby O'Karake, and uh, bro, what the hell's going on here, a linebacker, Adora Jackson's out, Trey Hawkins, uh, Cordell Flop, Deontay Banks Corner, Aaron Robinson's also out, Bob McCain is questionable, Jason Pinnock, Xavier McKinney are, your, are their safeties, Randy Bullock is their kicker, Fat Randy, Jamie Gillen is their punter, Goner Alls, Wesky, Paris Campbell are the returners, Adore Jackson again is out, and Casey Carter is their long snapper. And for the commander, Sam Howell, quarterback, Jacoby says his backup, Brian Robinson Jr., Antonio Gibson is doubtful, Chris Rodriguez Jr. is the backup if he can't go, probably not though, we'll have to wait and see, Dar Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, our receiver, Diamond Brown's also there, da uh, Dax Milne, Brandon Daniels, uh, Shaq Charles, uh, Ricky um, Stromberg, uh, Curtis Brooks, David Bada, Shaq and Tony, Cody Barton, Jeremy Reeves, Troy Apke, Derek Forrest, all on IR with um, Logan Thomas and John Bates, tight end, Alex Arm is out, Charles Leno Jr., Tr Chris Paul, Tyra Larson, Sam Cosby, and Andrew Wiley across the offensive line, Jason Smith Williams out, FAO um, Obata, Casey Jewell now off the edge with um, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne at defensive tackle, Cleeky Hudson, okay, um, what is it called? Um, David Mayo and Jamin Davis at uh, all linebacker. Drew Bill Cox is uh, again uh, got picked up on this team. Drew White's also out. Kendall Fuller, uh, Danny Johnson, Mano Forbes, Man Benjamin St. Juice in the corner. When was Jabril Cox picked? Think he's a boss for the Republic. I don't know, not probably probably not. Percy Butler and Cameron Curl are your are, are your safeties. Your punter is uh, your kicker, my bad, is Joey Sly. Your punter is Tressway, as always. Uh, Jimmy Scrattery is your punter returner, your kicker returner. Again, Antonio Gibson doing doubtful Brown Pringle could do that, and as well as Cameron Cheeseman doing all that long snap and stuff. All right, for the Giants offense, Saquon 20 plus carries. Please give him the football. Tommy making a couple of uh, attempts outside of the numbers. Off play action, again, under 2.75 yards per drop. That's really just to simplify stuff in as well. Tommy Bill actually has been pretty accurate there. And Sam will start with Jalen Hyatt. He's really the guy who can separate on your offense. So, I mean, get him the football, I guess. Defensively, though, Coyle fly with another interception. Again, just for kicks. Obviously, uh, no, they need him to get those. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau as well, as well as two plus pressures per quarter, which is eight in total. He's definitely got to do that. And again, Aziz Olari two plus sacks. Again, off of those pressures by Kayvon Thibodeau. Those two get going. I think this um, defense could give this offense a shot, at least staying in the game. Now we'll talk about the Commanders. And for the Commanders, 40 plus rush attempts. Again, get my ball on the ground to start. Make it hard for that offense to really get the ball back. And obviously, 35 plus minutes possession and 40 plus total yards will all get them a big time win to avoid a sweep, a season sweep. Uh, Spencer without John Allen, former pressure, didn't just get, he's got to get back to, into the way he's um, been playing before. But what is called Chase Young left, so again, the, those pressures would um, definitely up from. Kendall Fuller not being crap, bro. You've been terrible this year. Please stop sucking. And Cameron Curl with 10 plus plays. Tackles. Um, pass defended. Uh, good. Um, audible. Whatever it needs to be. Now to the Bears and Lions, guys. This should be a doozy. And the Bears and Lions get ready to go. Obviously, the Bears have played their fair share of games on Thanksgiving in Detroit, but this year it's no different than it was last year. Again, actually, for first time these two teams, they think, met in the same year for a little bit. But obviously, the Bears come in at 3-7. and seven. I think Justin Fields will be starting this game. Of course, last time he was in Detroit, uh, he threw a terrible interception, like, just so bad to Aiden Hutchinson. 
But he did run for like 100 yards and like split the defense in one of those runs, so that was kind of crazy on a huge run. But yeah, Bears are a pretty terrible team, uh, but they're happy again. They have the number one pick with the Panthers continuing to be trash. But obviously, after that Thursday night tank bowl, they're looking, I don't know, maybe to knock off a division rival. And obviously, the uh, Lions coming to 7 2. This is a uh, give you when most of their games for the rest of the season will be. But obviously, they have a big game, Thanksgiving win game on a short week. This is a game they want to get into. Be uh, done with this thing by halftime, and then obviously again the next week. But it is maybe a trap thing. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bears could punch him in the mouth for a little bit. But the Lions definitely want to come in here and trounce their, um, these Bears and just get out of here um, with a win again coming into next week again with the, um, the game with Thanksgiving. But it is a 1 o'clock on Fox. Fox for that men will your streaming services for this game. Uh, looking at the announcers, though, it will be, uh, where is it? Adam Mean, Mark Schlereth, Sh 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 Christina Pink. Switch to his rated Josh Apple and Brand Noble. If you didn't know, these two teams actually played, when they played last year again, well, actually this year, being a technical. Uh, the Bears, um, Lions were about 41-3 to at one point. Again, final score was 41-10. to Looking at it, it's literally all the NFC North teams that are getting this game outside of, again, Green Bay, because they have a game. But literally every other team, and again, probably Minnesota, too, but, like, all of Illinois, very, very, very good. Like, most of Michigan, too. Um, yeah, that's all I got really for the game, guys. This game should be bad. Now let's look at the Bears starting lineup. All right, Justin Fields, the quarterback, Dyson Bajans is back with Dante Coleman, Squash Moore, Rashawn, Rashawn Johnson behind him. Joe Reed is on IR, the only guy I actually gets kind of ironic. Uh, DJ Moore, Darnell uh, Mooney, Tyler Scott, receiver, Cole Komet, well, uh, Robert Tony, tight end, and Willis Mercedes Lewis, Kyra, um, last game at fullback, Braxton Jones, Devin Jenkins, Cody Whitehead, Nate Davis, and uh, Darnell Wright across the up to the line. Yannick and Gakway, Andrew Billings, Je um, Justin Jones wanted this sweater off the edge, both Marcus Walker and Rashawn Green. TJ Edwards, um, tre um, both starting um, um, linebackers, uh, what is called uh, Tremaine Edmonds and Jackson Chinberg, little question mostly, I guess. Dylan uh, Cole and Micah, um, Micah Baskerville are both on standby. No um, Sewell's out. I swear this guy was a draft. I guess he's a UDFA. Whatever. Um, Jalen Johnson, Terrell Smith, uh, Ty Tyree Stevenson, Tyler Gordon at corner, Eddie Jackson, J Jawan Brisker are um, their safety. Tyler Sanders is their kicker, their punter. It's Trenton Gill, Trent Scott, and Tyler um, um, Scott are the returners. Tyler Skills is their long snapper as well. And for the Lions, Jared Goff, quarterback, Kenny Bridgewater, is back, and Hunter is out as well as Nate Zuckle, Jet Zonovan Knight. Um, Shane Zilster, Matt Nelson, Halva Vita Vita, Matt, um, James Houston, um, Emmanuel Mosley, CJ Gardner Johnson, all being on IR, as well as Dave Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs in the backfield, uh, Amar St. Brown, Josh Reynolds, James Williams, Lee Frame, a receiver, and, um, um, Don Pugh, Jones is also on this team. Sam Board, Brock Red, and Ted and Jason Kevin, again, I forgot about him again, is on IR at fullback. Ty, um, Ty Taylor, uh, Decker, John Jackson is, is out, uh, Coyote, um, uh, um, oh, Awasakia. Probably start um what is called Graham Glasgow, Frank Ragnall and Penny Soul across the offensive line with Aiden Hutchinson, Jack Kaminsky, Julian Okora, and yeah, the Okora brothers off the edge, Okora brothers, whatever. Isaiah Bugs is out, only McNeil, Brandon Neal, Jones is the human tackles, Jack Cable, and uh, Alex Anzalone, Derek Barnes and linebackers, Cameron Sutton, Brian Brand, Chase Lucas, Jerry, Jacobs at corner, and then Uvanu is questionable. Tracy Walker the third and Kirby Joseph again patrolling the secondary. Riley Patterson is the, your kicker, your punter is Jack Fox, Three Raymond Craig Reynolds, your returners, and Jacob Quaid is your long snapper with Scott Daly being on IR. And for the Bears, 30 plus points. Again, they're gonna score a good amount of points in this game. I'll just put it nicely. 200 plus, um, 220 plus total rushing yards. Get that game going again. Um, Justin Fields, any way you possible. Darnell Mooney, five plus targets in the second half as well. Getting the football a lot there again. If this offense didn't have a chance again, if they have to come back, he's got to be a big part of it with those big plays. Meanwhile, defensively, Terrain Edmonds, six plus tackles. Uh, yeah, if he can go. Obviously, Jalen Johnson under 50 um rating allowed, which is not gonna be easy again for any player. But again, he's gonna have to have a big game. If, again, they want to have a shot at winning this one. Eddie Jackson and Jaquan um, Brisker punishing the backs and receivers over the middle. Just absolutely light them up, even if it results in a foul. Just make sure they know you're going to be get absolutely, getting absolutely like um, laid on if you try if you try to make a play over the middle. Now let's talk about the Lions. Yeah, for the Lions, um, Jared Goff, zero fumbles. Uh, yeah, please don't fumble the football. I just had a couple flashbacks. Jameer Gibbs, 20 plus um, um, touches and two plus touchdowns. So explosive. Um, still so four, four plus targets in the third quarter. The reason I say the third quarter is because he's a guy who can definitely come right off the half and just absolutely, like, light it up, do it. 20 plus points, um, and 20 plus point win. Again, that's not going to be too easy because, again, any team blowing blow another team out is never going to be actually easy, but they can do that. That would be nice. Defensively, again, they want to uh, basically rest their starters in the second half. Uh, Lions defense, Cam Sun, four plus pass to defend it. Again, get really working himself there. But let's, uh, I'm off the right edge with either of the core brothers, and they're going to um, beat him one way or another. And uh, obviously, nine plus tackles from uh, Jack Campbell with Alex Anzalone in support in case he misses. Um, again, he's got to be the, the main producer there. He's had a tough season. Um, I won't say tough, but um, a little inconsistent start to his career. Big um, confidence boost with that, too. Obviously, with Alex Anzalone, he's been a, um, a sub linebacker for most of his career. So, I shouldn't do it anyway. Now, let's get to the first national game. Well, again, this sucks. Yeah, Fox really uh, just, just put the hammer down when it came to Week 11. Because, Jesus, this is the best game you got. Holy crap. <laughs> Cowboys will head to Carolina for a game.
game before Thanksgiving that they should again. Kind of like the Lions. Just absolutely maul over the Panthers and head in the Thanksgiving, of course, against the Commanders, who, uh, again, first meeting they'll play that year. But either way, of the year. But, um, again, the Panthers, like, they're terrible, guys. They're the worst team in the league. Maybe, maybe, maybe they keep this game at two scores, but that's best case scenario. I guess they are home, but yeah, this game's going to be bad. Cowboys 6-3 coming off a big win against a terrible team. Again, they don't really play a good team until, I don't know, maybe two weeks um, from, yeah, two weeks from now. The game's at 1 o'clock on Fox. The NFL, um, the NFL Fox, then Fox Sports app, NFL Plus, Fubo, guys, TV, or streaming, streaming for, for this game. As well as the State Farm Pros Game Show is after this game. So, again, you want to hear the site highlights from all the other games, you can watch that after this. Announcing this again, it since it's again Fox's national game, it will be Kevin Burkhart, Craig Olson, Aaron Anderson, Tom Rinaldi. Looking at the map though, it is in red. Um, that actually bunch of the country is actually getting this game. It's it's less than you think. But again, you got most of the so southern part of the country. Obviously, you got northeast as well as this area, whatever you want to call that. Again, really northwest as well. The weather in Charlotte, it's going to be 64 degrees. A little um, no, not really much wind. Again, just 64 degrees and sunny basically. So really nice weather for the Cowboys. To actually, just stomp on the Panthers. Now let's get right into the Cowboys starting. Oh wait, no, no, the two teams played back in 2021. Of course, when the Panthers were three and zero and they got blown. Out. Final score was 36 28, which did not indicate the game. It was like 36 14 for most of it. But, I mean, the, the Panthers kind of held in for a part of it. And I think that, yeah, you get the first game without uh, CMC then. Now let's look at the Cowboys starting lineup. And for the boys, Dak quarterback Cooper Rush is his backup. Tony Pollard, Vigo Dowdle is extra questionable, so Deuce Vaughn again will probably see. As well as CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup, a receiver. David Durden is on IR, as well as Peyton Henderson, Josh Bell, Matt Wajiko. Uh, Malaysia Foco Jr., another Foco dude. CJ Goodwin, um, um, and Trayvon Diggs, Marvin Overshan, LV, again, all those guys on IR. Jake um, Ferguson, Luke Schoenmacher at tight end. Uh, Hunter Lukey is their fullback. Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, uh, Tyler Biotis, uh, um, Zach Martin, Terrence Steele across the offensive line with Demarcus Lawrence, Dorn Johnson, Dr. Field, um, Tyler Jr., Sam Williams off the edge. Chauncey Golson also there as well as Josh. Um, John the Hankins, also Diggy Zua. Um, Damone Clark, Marquise Bell, Micah um, Parsons are the linebackers. Stephon Gilmore, Jordan Lewis, Deron, but no leg, Ben Agony at corner. Molly Cooker and um, Jaron Curse are your safety as well as. Um, uh, when, are their safety as well as Donovan. Uh, Wilson, Brandon Aubrey is their kicker, their punters, um, Brian Ager, Todd Kirby, their returner, and Trent Seek is their long snapper. And for the Panthers, Bryce Young, quarterback, Danny Dolphins is back up to Hubbard, um, Miles Sanders is back with Adam Dillinch, uh, DJ Chark Jr., Jonathan Mingo, receiver, um, Louis Chanel Jr. is questionable, um, what is called, Anders is out, Tom Trumbull behind him, Steven Sullivan is also questionable, Ekem Buquana, Chandler Zavala, um, Brian Bo uh, Bradley Bozeman, uh, what is it called? Austin Corbett, Taylor Moore across the offensive line, Brady Christensen, uh, Chandler w um, Wooden, uh, yeah, Chandler Wooden, uh, Woodson, whatever. Henry Anderson, uh, Jerry Ross Mondo, Shaq Thompson, uh, Luigi Villian, uh, Justin Houston, Jeremy Chin, all in IR with Deshaun Williams, Shai Tuttle, Derek Brown across the offensive line. Brian Burns, Frankie Louvu, uh, no, and um, DJ Johnson off the edge, uh, as, Mar as well as Marvin Garno. Marcus Sen um, Sr. is out. As well as Frankie Louvu and DJ Johnson being, again, no, my bad. Frankie Louvu and De uh, Deion Jones being a linebacker. Bro, how old is this dude? Oh, he's like, again, okay, that makes sense. Wait, third round pick. They picked him in the third round? That's crazy. I thought Marvin Barno was better. I swear he was. Whatever. I get confused with those. Uh, where's the other one? There was another guy. Um, No, this is, isn't he like 30? He's 32. He's old. Um, what is it called? Dante Jackson, uh, this dude, uh, Troy Hill, um, CJ Henderson is out. I'm, I'm be completely honest, guys. They could put, um, like, Jalen Ramsey, Jairo Alexander, and, I don't even know, Patrick Tan, uh, what is it called? Sauce? Anyone at corner, they're not gonna stop this Cowboys offense. Xavier Woods is questionable. Sam Franklin Jr. behind him. Again, the guy with that 99-year pick six, as well as Von Bell strong safety. Only good player on this defense, at least right now, I guess. I mean, Brian Burns is awesome, and Derek Brown. Still only has one sack this year, bro. Get more sacks, but he'll, he's probably going to have, like, 60 tackles, which is kind of good for a defense tackle. Eddie Pinero is your kicker, though. Johnny Hecker is your punter. Amir Smith, our steady force, that touchdown last week. You're only one, basically, like, a long time. Or even uh, Blackshear is well in the back. So, JJ Jansen, is, as well as your long snapper. All right, guys. For the Cowboys, Dak, for over 200 yards in the first half. Just bomb it deep, bro. Three-plus deep shots for Brandon Cooks. Again, he had a really big week last week. Again, keep get that going. And obviously, two-plus touches for um, Tony P., Every dive in the first half, get in the football, guys. He just, again, he hasn't done anything this year. Honestly, I don't know how you guys are going to do against good teams if he isn't a big part of your offense. Meanwhile, eventually, five plus sacks. That should be very easy, guys. Micah getting pre a pressure per drive, which, again, yeah, actually, yeah, it's pretty difficult. Okay, but again, when he plays, that'll be big. Drumlin shutting down Adam Thielen, like literally no catches. And four plus three now, it's forced in the first half. Would theoretically put the Cowboys up 28 nothing. Now let's look at the Panthers. We move over to the Panthers, Bryce saying, um, saying enough's enough and playing hero ball to the tune of four picks, three to the house, under 100 passing yards, and 45% completion percentage. Yeah, 
That's what I'm going to guess is going to happen. Because, again, if Bryce says, I'm done with this, he means it. <laughs> but defensively, under 100 rushing yards allowed, Um, yeah, th that's paramount. If they give it more than that, they're just going to get ran over. Make Dak step up and throw on third down. That's the one thing he didn't have to do last week. He just getting got out of the ball. Of Sanswick. And two plus trick sacks from Brian Burns because he's going to have to take over this game if they want to even sniff at having a competitive game. Now let's look at the, um, the doubleheader games for CBS. First one is going to be pretty crucial. Here we go. How good can this Browns defense really be to beat a Steelers team that is looking to somehow get the seventh round? Even though this is BS, guys. Here we go. Doubleheader on CBS. This game's going to be bananas. <laughs> And the Steelers head to Cleveland for their game against the Browns. Of course, this is kind of great for them. I mean, like, their offense has just been play playing terrible here the past couple of years. Kind of, to, like, that's just the complete reality of it. But then again, the Steelers are going to have to play here every year. So this is what's going to happen. Browns, of course, winners of back-to-back -back games. Uh, this defense is just, it's unbelievable. They're crazy. But... They're going to play even better because they're playing the Steelers team. And the Steelers, the Steelers, let's be completely honest, offensively, they suck. They're just not good. But, I mean, they, they run the ball at least somewhat well, at least past couple of weeks. Uh, past game, obviously, he's always out of rhythm. Matt Cannon is a terrible um, offense coordinator. All that in the shebang. Obviously, defensively, though, they forced a lot of turnovers. They had two touchdowns against them defensively against the Browns back in week two. Good news is, I mean, it's terrible news. Again, I don't even know what the Jukes really expect with this. Uh, but I guess Dory Thompson Robinson is going to start. My guess is they'll be throwing a lot of quick passes, which means the Steelers will have a lot of opportunities to make some big hits, which I guess is good. But again, both these teams coming in this one at six and three. Huge game for both sides. Again, both on two game winning streaks. Steelers, of course, looking to get seven and three and really get ahead in this division. What would they be? Three and zero or four and zero? Something like that. Uh, Browns obviously are going to get a big division win as well. This game's at 1 o'clock on CBS. And Boston, uh, Paramount Plus are streaming services for this game. Again, both these teams are the 5 and 6 seeds in the AFC. So you think, where will they be? So they won against the... No, not against the Bengals. They won against the Ravens. Did they beat the Browns? They beat the Browns too. So, oh yeah, Steelers looking to sweep them too. I swear they beat the Bengals. No, they didn't play the Bengals. They will soon though. Um, So they're 2-0 in the division. The Steelers are. Browns are beat the bit. Uh, they're two and one. So yeah, the Ra Browns with the win would get, really get ahead on the Steelers in this division. Looking at it though, again, I and Eagle Charles Davis and Washburn the call for this game at one o'clock. Again, we'll get to the, a little more later. But looking at it again, it's in red. Most countries get in this game because it is a huge game, guys. I'd really want to watch it too. Again, it could be ugly at times, but that's what I got there. The weather in Cleveland's gonna be a little uh, windy and a little cold, but it's still gonna be sunny, a little humid too. Should be a good day for football though. Obviously. Uh, when you look at it, looking at the history of these teams, obviously the Miles Garrett, um, Mason Rudolph debacle, 21-7 to was final score for the Browns in that one. They did win it, and then obviously 2020, uh, the Browns were able to um, get to the playoffs, so they did the 24-22 win. And then last year, uh, I mean not last year, the year uh, after that, they again, the Steelers kind of um, got away with a 15-10 to win. But then last year, the Browns won. Uh, basically, 23-17 was a close game, but 29-17 to was final score. So the Browns have actually had success against the Steelers here. See if they can do some of the same. Now let's look at the Steelers starting lineup. All right, Kenny Pickett, quarterback, Mr. Trubisky, is back of Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, Anthony McFarlane, Jr. in the backfield, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, and Allen Robinson, receiver. Uh, Connor Hayward, Darnell, uh, right, um, what is it called, Darnell Washington, tight end. You could see Pat Farmer again, he is questionable. Daniel Jr., Isaac Solomon, Mason Cool, James Daniels, Broderick, um, Jones Cross, you have some line. Larry Ogan, Joby, Demontre, Davis, Adams, is out, Keanu, and Benton probably will start. Ronell, Rand, Cole Holcomb, Ch Chappelle, Russell, Quan Alexander, Ke um, Keanu, Neal, and Corey Trice Jr., all on IR. With T.J. Watt, Alex Heisman, Nick Harabig, and Marcus Golden off the edge, Marcus Robinson, and Alain Roberts are the linebackers. With Patrick Peterson, Levi Wallace, James Pierre, and your, um, Joey Porter Jr. in your corner. Um, Nick Evans, Patrick, he's out. Elijah Riley, could see starting as well as Demonte KZ. Uh, uh, Chris Boswell is their kick is their kicker. Their punters, Presley Harvin, uh, Cameron Austin, and uh, Godwin Gablica are the returners, and Christian Kuntz is their long snapper. For the Browns, Jordan Thompson, Robinson, quarterback, P.J. Walker is his backup, Do Deshaun Watson, Jakeem Grant Sr., Nick Chubb, basically Michael Woods, Jared Wilson Jr., Dawson Dean, uh, Jack Conklin, Thomas Graham Jr., um, Jordan uh, Kanuziak, Cameron Mitchell, all on IR, with Jump Ford, Kareem in the backfield, as well as Pierre Strong Jr., Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, and Sutter Tillman, receiver, uh, um, what is called Marquise Goodwin is out, as well as David and Joku Harris, Brian at tight end. James Hudson, uh, Joe Patone, Ethan Polk, Wyatt Taylor, Dewan Jones, Splashable James, again, probably see, I don't know, drawing Christian, maybe. Uh, Miles Garrett, uh, what is called Darius Smith, Alex Rice, and Ogbo, uh, Ogbo off the edge. Dalvin, uh, Thomas, and Jordan Elliott, defense tackles. Jordan Elliott has been pretty good this year. JOK, Anthony Walker Jr., and Sonny Taki Taki are the linebackers. With Denzel Ward, um, 
Ryan Emerson Jr., Mike Ford, and Ray Nelson Jr. at um, the third and second and corner. Juan Thornhill lays out. Ronnie Cloud will start his free safety with. Grant Delvin is strong safety. Dustin Hopkins is their your kicker, your punter, for um, Fort Burke has. James Roche, Pearson Jr., returner, and Charlie Hewlett's a long snapper. All right, we're on to see for Pittsburgh. It's Kenny throwing for over 200 yards. I don't, I don't, I'm not very confident this offense is just going to purely be able to run the football, so I mean, that's probably important. Najee and Jalen over 4.5 yards per carry again. Efficiency, I guess. No, it's going to be a couple big runs to get some that to anything. Deontay Johnson, 5 will starters, and 20 plus points. Again, the 20 plus points is probably the big thing. If they can do that, I, I have a pretty good chance, um, idea that this team has a good shot at winning. And I have to get the ball to Deontay Johnson because he's really the only guy who can consistently get open. Outside, obviously, George Pickens, but uh, guys, he's like a 5 route runner, right? At least at this point. Defensively, though, 2 plus turnovers in that first half. Force them. Please get this offense and get some good spots. Have Patrick Peterson play flexible zones and cut off prospects from David Njoku while play action. That's really all he has to do because there's really no one else who can make a play. Again, he'll get easy on Dorian Thompson Robinson. By having that, yeah, Patrick Peterson just take that way in a heartbeat. Now, let's talk about the Browns. And for Cleveland, what is it called? PG taking a couple of sh chances. I don't care. I mean, that's actually not PG. That's Dorian Thompson Robinson. Never mind. Don't. Three plus 25 yard runs from the running backs. They got to get that going, obviously, with the Mark Cooper finding a way. Um, to um, get into Dorian Thompson Robinson, um, Robinson's comfort areas. We can't be at the second level because, again, he has absolutely no touch. And Elijah Moore, three plus screens. Yeah, that, that, that's something you got to get going. Elijah Moore, I'm just sorry, bro. You can't really run any routes right now. Please just catch the ball on screens and make plays after that. Browns defense, though, Miles Garrett, three plus sacks. He's got to get a ton of pressure. He's going to have a big game. Martin Emerson Jr., 10, um, under, um, 10 yards um, per depth of the target. Again, if he gets a bomb thrown on him, he knocks it away. That's something different. But, again, if he's getting burned once in a while and they just keep throwing it downfield him, that's not good. He's got to be able to... Um, Force um Kenny Pickett to throw it on her on him and obviously six plus stackers from Grand Delta as well. Keep it keep it up, bro. Now let's get the Bucks for Niners. Now we're getting the late afternoon regional window here in week eleven. And the Niners again. They, uh, what was I saying? They played at home. Uh, let me think. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, they return home for the first time since week eight against the Niners squad. I'm mean, against the Bucks squad that is coming off a pretty um. I won't say impressive win, but a pretty solid win over the Titans. 20 to 6 was the final score there. Bucks, they're gonna have to play absolutely out of their minds to win this one, though. Coming in at 4 and 5, but actually if they win, they will take control of the NFC South. Niners again, right? Again, they're probably back. They just absolutely dismantled the Jacks. Um, 34 to 3 in their last game. Again, they are 6 and 3 on the season, but they are actually tied with the Seahawks in terms of record for that NFC West um top slot. So again, if they lose, you know, eh, a lot of stuff's up in the air. But again, it is the only game actually in the um, 405 window for Fox. So again, you'll see some pretty good announcers. But again, it is on Fox. Fox was out. NFL Plus streaming services for this game. I won't say there's really any coverage before or after the game, because again, again, the 405 window is just really funky. But it's going to get a little bit of attention, obviously. Well, a lot of attention, again, with it being the only game in that window. Joe Davis, Daryl Johnson, Pam Oliver on the call, though, with um, Compass Media being Morgan, um, Mike Morgan and Brian Baldinger. Uh, looking at the map, that is not right. That is definitely not right. <clears throat> Back to it. It is in blue. So if you live in Florida, you're definitely getting this game. If you live in any of the NFC North and, I guess, NFC South areas, maybe you'll be getting this game. This is some really weird areas. Obviously, you've got most of the West Coast as well getting this. So should be pretty cool with that. The weather in Santa Clara will be 59 degrees. A good amount of wind, though, so that could definitely affect it. And a little cloudy. So, yeah, this game could definitely be interesting for sure. Again, these two teams last played last year, last year where the 49ers actually mauled the Bucs for 35-7, which, honestly, this year would be over last year, but again, you never know. And they also played in 2019 in Tampa, but yeah, like that didn't really matter because I mean, they, I, really, last year was the only game that kind of mattered for that. Now let's look at the Bucks starting lineup. And for the Bucks, Baker quarterback Kyle Trask is his backup. Rashad White, Chase Edmonds in the backfield as well as Sean Tucker. He will get a carrier too. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Trey Palmer, receiver Russell Gage, Ryan Jensen, both on IR with uh, what is called Kate on at tight end. Uh, Tristan Wurst, Matt Filer is questionable. Aaron Cini behind him. Uh, Robert Haynesy, Robert Haynesy, yeah. Cody Mouch, Luke Getty, Kiki Cross, Yamsen line with Kalash Kansi, Vita Bay, Logan Hall, defensive line, uh, as well as Joe Tryon, uh, Shaq Barrett, and Anthony uh, Nelson, a, um, say, um, what is called, uh, edge rushing group, obviously, with uh, Joe Tryon, Sharanka, also there. What is it? What was I saying? Drew White is questionable. I've had uh, KJ Britt. Someone will start if he can't go. Levante David, of course, the other linebacker. Jamel Dean, Zion, um, um, uh, McCollum, and D. Delaney. Uh, D. Delaney. Josh Haynes, Rob Ryan Neal's actually out, and Carlton Davis are all questionable in the secondary. Christian Eisen and Antonio Jr. are starting anyway, though. Chase McLaughlin is their kicker, their punter, Jake Armada. De Devon Tompkins is their turner, and Zach Triners are long snapper. And we know for the Niners, Brock Purdy, quarterback Sam Darnold, his back, Christian McCaffrey, Elijah uh, Mitchell in the backfield, uh, Debo Samuel, uh, um, what's it called, Brandon Ayuk, Jawan Jennings, all receiver, Danny Gray, Nick, Nick this dude, uh, Drake Jackson, Robert Beal Jr., and Sam Womack III, all on IR with uh, George Kittle, Charlie Warner at tight end, uh, Kyle Ushek at fullback, Trent Williams, Aaron Banks is out, John Feliciano will probably start. As well as Jake Reynolds, Spencer River, Cole Mavikavitz. Uh, Chase Young, Nick Bosa, Randy Gregory, Cleveland Farrell off the edge with Eric Armstead and Javon, Javon Hargrave, a defensive tackle. Um, 
D Dre Greenlaw, um, let's go Fred Warner, Erwin Burks at linebacker, Trivius Ward, Isaiah Oliver, Andrew Thomas, and the Yamada Lenore corner. Uh, Tijan Gibson Sr. and uh, Tulane Levonga Forcer, your safety. Shasiri Brown also there again at a Penn State mid. The Penn State mid. Was he a sixth round pick? No, he was a third round pick. Then they picked him early. Jake Moody is your kicker. Your punter is Mitch Wisnowski. Ray McLeod, the third, is your returner. And Jamie Pepper is again as well. A long snapper. And for the Bucks, 25 plus first downs. That seems crazy, but I really think they're going to have to get a lot of first downs in this game and control a lot of the clock to, again, stay on the field and make sure that, again, they get ahead. Baker, under 2.5. Um, um, Point, yeah, under two, um, 2.25 drop, um, per drop of third down. Get the ball out of your hands really quick. If it's third and long, like, like I really don't care, you're going to get sacked either way. Rashad White, six plus screens. Getting the ball underneath. Again, he was explosive last week with that. Maybe not another 40, so short touchdown. Per, um, but again, he did only get some first downs there. And Chris Godwin, uh, 10 plus catches, over 12 yards per, um, per catch overall as well. Again, just have a really solid day from Chris Godwin. He's got to really contribute. Defensively, keep um, McCaffrey under three um, three yards per, um, um, per attempt after contact. Whatever, that's something like. Yeah, yards after per attempt. You do not want to break. Um, let's go. Bring attack on just getting downfield. Just make sure he gets down in those first plays. Debo can't get to the edge on, um, off a sweep or reverse. He's break, either cutting it in or just keep going outside, either get a first down or going to the um, the house. And make Brock uh, roll left to fi um, find a big play. He's not good when he does that. Obviously, you can get a pick off when he, that happens too. Now let's the 49ers. And for San Fran, seven will start in the first half. Um, Skip for George Kittle. Try to get him involved early. He'll really become a better blocker when that happens. Well, Trent Williams. Uh, silencing Shaq Barrett, I mean literally like just absolutely picking him up tossing him, whatever you need to. And Elijah Mitchell, 12 plus carries, getting the football, again he can be a really good power guy. Not only did he um, punch his defense in the mouth, but also give them some good chances. Um, what is called, that getting some tough off play action. Defensively, Goose Egg in the second half, yeah, second half shutout. Avery Thomas getting the start because of his tackling last week. He was actually a really good player last week, I want to see him um, getting the start because again, he makes some, he could make again, some really nice plays in this one as well. That's all I have for the Niners guys, now it's the Seahawks and Rams. And the Seahawks travel to Los Angeles to avoid a sweep, but also get a massive win that will, I, I wouldn't say save them, but they got they got some really rough games coming up. Uh, but yeah, the Seahawks, of course, coming in at 6-3 and three off of a close win against the Commanders at home. But again, they are 6-3, and three. they are in a good spot. Actually, they're looking at, again, they have a huge Thanksgiving night game against the Niners on Thursday, so that'll be really interesting. Rams, of course, coming 3-6, and six. this is a must win for them. They lose this game, their season is over, but if they do win... I mean, maybe they make the playoffs. Their second half of schedule is cupcakes, but we'll have to wait and see again. Uh, but I'll put it like this. Durant played really well against Seahawks in Sean McVay's career. Obviously, last year they got swept, but it was kind of sucked because you know, they really don't have a quarterback. Now they do. Uh, Matt Stafford isn't fully healthy. He just won't be for the rest of the year again. The hip injury, all this crap. Well, again, very different from the Seahawks and Rams in week one. The Rams absolutely trounced Seahawks. 30-13 was the final score. They shut him out. 23 to nothing so, um, second half for them. But obviously, Cooper Cup's playing this game. If you didn't know, um... Cooper Cup, when he played the Seahawks back in 2020, uh, yeah, 2021, where the Rams, I'll be honest, like, they didn't really even play that well. This was a really defensive game. He went for 136 yards and nine catches for two touchdowns. He absolutely torched them. So, with him back now, I do expect this Rams team to play a little better. But then again, I really don't know what to expect from this game because, guys, it could be wild. Again, this is a must win for the Rams. I'm just, like, whatever you do. Win this game as, as well. It's a 425 on CBS, Envo Plus, and Paramount Plus are your streaming services for this game. Obviously, the game break show will be at four o'clock. And if this game doesn't go haywire, I will say there's gonna be a post game show after. So that's what I gotta say there. Obviously, looking at the announcers, it's not gonna be seen. Um, CBS is number one team. It's Andrew Catalan, Tiki Bat, Robert Matt Ryan, AJ Ross. So again, it is a B game per se, as well as Sportuous Radio having Larry Con and Alex Mack on the call. Again, former Falcon Center. The whole West Coast is getting this game. So if you if you live on the West Coast, there's nothing you can say because you are getting this football game. It's it's very um it's very easy to know that because it's like they're all, it's all blue. But yeah, that's what I got there, guys. Uh, again, huge big game for both these teams. Time to see Seahawks starting lineup. And for Seattle, Juno Smith, the quarterback, Drew Locke, is his backup, Kenneth Walker, Drew, um, the third, what the hell, Zach Charbonnet, both in the backfield, uh, DK Metcalf, Tyler Locke is questionable, Jake Bobo, and JSN are both there, though, Derek Young is out, no fan, will this lead a tight end, Nick Ballore is their fullback, uh, Charles Leno, um, Charles Cross, my bad, Damian Lewis, Evan Brown, Phil Haynes, Storm Forrester, the rest of the line, with Abraham Lucas, Mike Morris, Latrell Bumpus, uh, Joshua, whatever this guy's name is, um, Greg Thomas, uh, Uchenna Wilson, Kobe Bryant, and, uh, Andrew Whitaker across the offensive line, uh, Arlen and I are my bad. Draymond Jones, Jaron Reed, Leonard Williams are the defensive linemen with Boyle Maffe, Daryl Taylor, Frank Clark, and Derek Hall off the edge. Jordan Brooks and Bobby Wagner are the defensive tackles. Devon Witherspoon, Reek Wollin, and Michael Jackson in the corner. Trey Brown is questionable. Jamal Adams is also questionable, so you can definitely see Julian Love as well as Quandary Diggs. At safety, Jason uh, Myers is their kicker. Their punter is Michael Dixon. GG Dallas, the extra are their turners, and Chris Dole is their long snapper. And for the Rams, Matt Stafford, quarterback Carson Wentz, of course, is their now, now backup. Uh, let's go. Kyron Williams, Stone Iyer, as well as Jason Taylor. Dale Henderson Jr., Royce Freeman, Zach Evans in the back through. Cooper Cup, 
Puka Nakua, Tuju Awa, receiver. Tyler Higby, uh, what is it called? Bryson Hopkins, a tight end. Aaron Jackson, Siva Villa. Brian Allen, Kevin Dotson, Rob, Rob Havenstein across the offensive line. Jonah Williams, uh, Kobe um, Turner, Aaron Donald across the defensive line. Bobby Brown is um, questionable as well, again, coming off IR. Byron Young, Michael Hoy um, off the edge. Again, Ocean Mathis is also there. Ernest Jones and Christian Roseman are both also there. Akel Willis from Derry, um, Darren Kendrick. Uh, Duke Shelley could start again with the Kobe Brown, what is called? Kobe um, Durant being questionable. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Jordan Fuller, rush east of the safeties. Uh, Luke uh, Haverstick is your kicker. Your punter is Evan, uh, um, Ethan Evans. Os Trammell is your returner, and Alex Ward is your long snapper. All right, for Seattle offensively, ball control over big plays. Yeah, you're going to want to keep the ball longer than you think you would. Again, the Rams offense does suck when they are not on the field that long. 60 plus percent on third down as well. They're going to be very big there. Again, uh, I really think, again, being really efficient on third down, getting the ball to JSN there, that would be big. Gino's not taking any sacks either. Again, getting the ball quick. And JSN and Deco both going over 100 um, receiving yards each, which, again, they both go um, um, over that. Again, pretty confident. They'll have a pretty good day. Meanwhile, eventually, don't get burned like week one. Again, the receivers and the running back, stuff like that. Under 35 rushing times again, though, you do not want the Rams running the football on you as much as you think they will. And obviously, he gets um, Stafford in the third and long end. That's how you get sacks on him. Now, if you triple Cooper Cup, do not let him get open. Yeah, it's pretty simple with the Seahawks, guys. Defensively, you just can't let them even get in the running situation. Because, again, their offense will be able to score points. Now, let's talk about the Rams. All right, actually, the past two weeks, um, like, yeah, the past three weeks, Cooper Cup just simply has not been, like, been able to do anything. First off, again, week seven, again, he's stuck second against Steelers. I don't know what the hell happened on two weeks ago. And then, actually, last week, uh, or two weeks ago, the Rams just simply, like, they, they didn't really do anything. So, yeah. But Cooper, massive, massive bounce back game. Eight close catches, 100 plus receiving yards. Back to that. Cooper getting, Cooper Puka getting more involved. Again, just get him back in that offense. See what he can do there. 30 plus rushing attempts while maintaining possession as well. They got to be able to run the, um, run the ball enough to the point where they can get win that possession battle. And as well, Matt staying under wraps um, to avoid any thumb collisions. Please, for God, bid, protect him. Meanwhile, with this defense, sub 75 rating allowed by the back end. They got to be better than they've been the past couple weeks, guys. They've really sucked. Ernest Jones, 10 plus tackles as well. Again, him having back huge. Aaron and By uh, Byron both with the four plus pressures. They're the um, two best passers. You show it. And Michael Hoyt forcing a turnover. I don't care how he does it. He could literally just like absolutely like blow up a guy. I don't care. Do anything you need to do to force a turnover or kick someone. I don't <laughs> Whatever way possible. Well, legally it would be nice and better. But yeah, forcing a turnover would be huge. Now let's get to the Jets and Bills, guys. It's a must win in Buffalo as the Bills fired Ken Dorsey. This is offense finally just have an outburst against the Jets defense. That, I mean, they've been great this year, but their offense hasn't scored a touchdown in two weeks, guys. Like, yeah, it's a huge game, a doubleheader game, too. And the Jets head to Buffalo, where they do hope to get a bounce back when, of course, they've lost two straight. Their offense has not scored a touchdown the past two weeks. And, um, yeah, this is a game they need to win. Bills in their hand, they're free falling. They're around 5-5. Five and five. They have lost three out of their last four, I think. No, they've lost, like, four out of their last five. Something like that. Not even. I think they have four out of their last six. I don't know. They, they've been playing bad football as of late. That's all I'll put it. Um, but obviously, um, the Bills are coming off a just, a, a, like, just a, like, a complete disaster against the Broncos, of course, where they, um, jump off set after the missed, um, what is it called, um, what is it called, missed game-winning field goal. Uh, Jesse Aaron, four and five. Again, like I said, they haven't scored a touchdown the past two weeks. And they lost to the Raiders team they should have beat last week. Uh, the game's at 425 on CBS. Animal Plus, on Paramount Plus, streaming streamers for this game. And the Bills, obviously, last year struggled in Mount Life like they did this year early. They arrived with the um, David Gibson game winning touchdown. But they were able to hold the Jets to 12 points last year and win that one to um, the first head to 10 3. Similar type game here. They got to win this one. That's how simply how we'll play it. And now it's in this game. Again, it'll be the national game for CBS. Doubleheader game two. Jim on um, Nance and Tony Robo, um, Tracy Wilson on the call. Steve Levy and Ops um, Tony will be on ESPN Radio. Uh, looking at the map, though, it's it's the whole entire rest of the country, guys. It's it's like, yeah. Whole, if you don't live on the West Coast, you're not, <laughs> you're getting this game. That, that's basically the best way I can put it. And obviously, looking at the weather, it's going to have a little bit of wind, a good amount of wind, 43 to 83 degrees. It's going to be a little, it's going to be really rough as well. It's going to be cloudy for this game. Should be a raucous crowd. Yeah, the Bills need to win this one, guys. Now let's look at the Jets starting lineup. And for the Jets, Zach Wilson, the quarterback, Brees Hall, down with cooking the back for the Aaron Rodgers, Kenny Oboa, West Sweet, uh, West Sweet, Wes Schweitzer, Connor McGovern, uh, Effendi Odiangbo, uh, Al Woods, Malik Hall, Br uh, Bradley and I, Justin Hardy, Chuck Clark, uh, Jalvin Gidley, uh, Jalvin Gidry, all in IR, uh, Garrett Wilson's questionable, Irving Charles, I don't know who this dude is, bro. He is some mad and creative player here, um, as well as uh, what is called Alan Lazard, David Gibson, a receiver. Tyler Conklin, CJ Uzama, tight end, Nick Bowden is their, is, uh, their fullback, uh, Mekhi Beckman, Lincoln Tomlinson, 
Joe Tipman playing two positions. J.K. Uh, Hanson probably will start there as well as um, Max Mitchell. Billy Turner is also out. John Franklin Myers, uh, Quentin Jefferson, Quentin Williams, Jermaine uh, Johnson, and Bryce off, off the edge. Again, is Carl Lawson is also there. Will McDonald's questionable uh, as well as Jamin Sherwood, C.J. Mosley, Quincy Williams being a linebacker. Two backup um, linebackers are both out as well. With Sauce Gardner, D.J. Reed, um, Michael Carter is questionable, so maybe we'll see Brendan Eccles starting it. So um, what is called the slot. As well as Jordan White and Tony Adams being in safety. Um, what is called Adrian Mills got um, bench because he is what thirty. Yeah, he's old. Uh, uh, Greg uh, Zerlin is their kicker, their punter, Tom, 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 Thomas Moore says David Gibson's the returner, and Thomas Hennessy is their long snapper. Hey, for the Bills, Josh Allen, a quarterback, James Cook, T.A.B. Murray in the backfield, Damian uh, Harris, Dawson uh, Knox, Justin Shorter, Zach Davidson, Tommy Doyle, uh, Dequan Jones, Matt Milano, uh, Kyrie Elam, and um, what is called Tredavious White, all on IR. With Stephon Day, Gabe Davis, Glitch, Kira, receiver. I'm um, going to call uh, Dolan Schultz, um, uh, Dolan Kincaid, and Quentin Morris, tight end. Reggie Gilliam is there, is your fullback. Deion Dawkins, David Edwards, um, Mitch Morris, Osiris, Torrance, Spencer Burford, across the, um, Brown across the offensive line. Gregory Sovon, uh, Miller, um, Leonard Williams, and uh, what is it called? Leonard Floyd, my bad, and AJ is off the edge. Jordan Phillips is questionable. Um, what is it called? Puna Ford also there as well as Ed Oliver and Tim Settle, defense tackle. Tyler Dotson, Terrell Bernard, Dorian Williams are uh, the linebackers with Teron Johnson, Dane Jackson. Christian Benford and Rasul Douglas being a corner. Mike Hyde and Jordan Player are your safeties. Tyler Bass, Sam Martin are your kicker and punter. DeAndre Hardy and Ty Johnson are your returners. And Reed Ferguson is your long snapper. And for the Jets, two plus touchdowns. Please get in the end zone, guys. It's not that hard. Zach not throwing um, the game away like last week. Again, I honestly would have took a touchdown over that, to be completely honest. And figure out a way to get the ball to Alan Lazard in the outside fades. Uh, please, just please do it. He's consistent there. Again, you want to get Garrett Wilson to other spots where he doesn't have to run those routes. Uh, defensively, force four of us turnovers, including a defensive touchdown. Uh, that, that's not going to happen. But maybe it can. Honestly, it probably will. Just get in the end zone for your offense. Sauce on digs. That's very simple. And Jordan Whitehead with a huge play to end it. I don't care if it's a tip. Just absolutely mauling Josh on. Do whatever you need for Jordan Whitehead to win this game. He had three picks last week. Last time these two teams played. See, it's honestly a similar ending. Now let's see the Bills. Yeah, Bills offense. I think it's really simple. Run the damn ball. I mean, like, obviously you got to go under center for that. But obviously you just don't run under center. Run the ball, guys. It's not that hard. Meanwhile, defensively, Jordan, um, Poyer, subseason evaporating allowed in man, um, they, they really need to do a better job with, um, what is called, putting Jordan Poyer in zone, I mean, again, he's just not that great man, but he's gotta be this week, <laughs> that's how I'll put it, have Jordan Williams play, um, Will this week, um, so that he can get, he can, um, what is called, try and get, um, Tigers lost, put the corners into a place to succeed. Then they really don't have a corner right now, guys. It's a simple truth about it. So, Jordan Lewis making plays definitely make their lives easier. And Von Miller, five plus pressures and a sack. Get back to it, bro. See what you can do. And I don't want to talk about this game anymore. Time for Saturday Night Football. This game should be very interesting. Vikings are looking for lucky number six. I just made that up. And, of course, the Broncos are looking for their third straight. No. Yeah, their third straight win, guy. No, fourth straight win. Dang, we got some really hot teams here on Sunday Night Football. should have a very good matchup as the 6-4 and four Vikings, led by Josh Dobbs, who is, again, the story of the year. Coming at 6-4, and four, winners of five, no, yeah, five in a row. Um, th This would be a crazy win if they get to number six and get to 7-4, but again, they could very well happen against the Broncos team. That actually, before this week, of one, one of their last two home games in their defense, simply the last three games has been dominant. But, again, we'll see what happens in this one. Again, they come in at 4-5. and five. Offensively, they're going to have to move the ball better than they have really all season. In my opinion, again, maybe not keep up with the Vikings, but play well with them. Because, again, the Vikings will push the pace for sure. Again, football in America starts at um, what is called 7 o'clock on NBC, which, again, is the way you watch this game, as well as Universo. And about plus Peacock, and mainly Peacock, are your streamers, so this is for this game. As well as the fact, again, though, um, what is called NBC is actually getting a game um, next on Thanksgiving night, so that should be cool. Neither of these teams, I think, no, neither of them play on Thanksgiving. Um... Looking at, though, the announcers for this game will be, um, what is it called, Mike Tirico, Chris Collinsworth, and Melissa Stark. West of will be Ryan Radjik and Mike Golick. Uh, looking at the weather in Denver, it, it might rain. Yeah, I'd say it's, it's definitely going to rain. It's going to be a rainy night, 50 degrees, uh, a little, a good amount of wind as well. So, it'll be very interesting to see how these two teams adjust to that. Obviously, though, these two teams played an absolute insane game back in 20, what is it called, 2019. Uh, the Vikings were up down 20 to nothing early. It looked like the Broncos were just going to get a big, uh, what is it called, yeah, yeah, um, the Vikings um, can get upset, but yeah, then they came back, and the final score was 27-23. Kirk Cousins wants bananas, and yeah, they went that one when they came. Maybe the Broncos uh, pull off an opposite, but yeah, obviously they're going to play a really good game. But again, the game's at 8-20 MDC. Uh, yeah, that's what I got for the game, guys. Let's get right into the Vikings starting lineup. All right, for the Vikings, uh, Josh Jobs, the cornerback, Jaron Hall is out, Nick Mullins is questionable, Kirk Cousins, Cam Akers, Justin Jefferson, again, he will not be playing this game, as you didn't know. Eliza Oda, um, James Lynch, Marcus Davenport, um, 
Jordan Hicks and uh, William Connect New are all on IR. Uh, Alan, Alex, Alex Madison, question mode, Ty Chandler, and Keenan Walker are the other running backs. Uh, Jordan Addison, K. Jasper, Brandon Powell, Jalen Naylor, receiver. Um, TJ uh, Hawkinson, Josh Oliver, tight end, CJ Ham is their fullback. Christian Darius, uh, Dalton Reisner, um, Garrett Bradbury, Ed Ringer, Brian Lou across the offensive line with Chris Reed being out. Uh, Dean Lowry, Harris Mills, John Florida, the offensive lineman with. Uh, Dino Hunter, DJ Wanham, Andre Carter, the second, and Pat Jones, the second, also on the yard. Ed, uh, I swear he has a sack. He doesn't, okay. Um, I'm Pace Jr., George Troy Dyer, the uh, linebackers with. Brian Asamoah being questionable. Okay, Evans is out. Mike, um, Mikai Blackman, uh, Andrew Booth Jr., and Byron Murphy Jr., are corner. Harrison um, Smith and uh, Cameron Bynum are the safeties. Greg Joseph is their kicker. Their punter is Ryan Wright. Brandon Powell and Keenan Walker are their returners. And Andrew DePaul is their long snapper. And for Denver, Russell quarterback Jared Stidham sits back up. Javante Boyd and Dylan Loft on the backfield. Portland signed Jerry Judy, Malcolm Mitch Jr. Receiver, Brandon Johnson, Jalen Virgil, Tim Patrick, Greg Dulcich, um, Alex Polacic, something like that. He, um, Azumi Zuzorda, I don't know how to pronounce that. Jonas Griffith, Caden Stearns, Kaylin Williams, on IR. Jonathan Harris, DJ Jones, Zach Allen, um, what is it called? Nick Benito. Thomas Income and Matt H- um, Henningsen all on, off the edge. Um, not really. Whatever. That's probably more Baron Browning. Whatever. Jo- Josie Jewell and Alex Singleton are the linebackers. Um, what is it called? With um, Patrick Tan, uh, Jay Conn McMillan, um, Damari Mathis, and Fabian Morrell at corner. Um, PJ Locke is out. Cameron uh, Kareem Jackson is back at safety as well as Justin Simmons. Uh, Will Lutz is your kicker. Your punter is Riley Dixon. Memberman Jr. is your returner. Marvin Mims Jr. is your returner. And Mitchell Farbani is your long snapper. All right, and we're on to from the Vikings offensively. It's Josh um, Dobbs going for over 300 through the air. Again, big day from him there. Again, that's more in the second half. He's got to be able to maintain what he does in the first half. Because I do I, I do think he'll have a successful game. Yeah, more Jordan Addison doing this. Make sure Justin Simmons come, uh, has to come up and stop the run. Because, again, when he does that, he can just simply not be as, um, what's called, focused against the pass. It's just not going to happen because, again, you have to worry about the run fits and all that and making sure there's no big runs. Again, if they get some of those early, it'll make it really hard for Justin Simmons, again, sit back there and try to bounce. Um, what is called beat Josh Dobbs into an ill-advised throw that, again, he will have to make because, again, he's just not as experienced. And Garrett Batter, 40 bucks percent run block. One the reason I said that is, guys, because he is one of the, like, like one of the, I won't say worst run blockers in the league, but there's a reason he's a center. Like, he's just not a very good run blocker, and he doesn't move guys. He's just got to be able to um, sustain some of those blocks that I'm um, running backs. At least this year, he's not been good that there. But his pass blocking has been really good, though. Defensively, though, Byron uh, Murphy, A plus jams and press zone. Again, just make it really hard on these guys to get open. Again, you could drop a little bit, too. But again, I just want you to make it hell for those um, receivers to get off the line. Harris Smith and Cam basically putting um, um any receiver over the middle on a vice. You just literally, like, as soon as that passes don't just kill him. That's basically what I say. I obviously once it gets there, though. And two plus turnovers. Force a couple of those. Keep it easy on that offense. Now let's look at for that. Now let's look at the Broncos to wrap this thing up. All right, for the Broncos, more big plays from Cortland Sutton. It, it, that, that's very simple. Like, he's got to be better, guys. Like, he's just not making the big plays you need him to right now. More of an—oh, obviously he had a touchdown last week. Never mind. More big plays. More of an aggressive approach on third down and screw the sacks. Yeah, honestly, I, I'm okay with them taking sacks. Well, um, it's just annoying because, like— I mean, shot paint, so you're just scheming up sacks, like, sometimes. It's really bad. And be more aggressive on third down. I like the fact you guys are dumping it down and stuff, but you got to get some first downs there. Justin Simmons continuing his um, fir- um, first team um, up row candidacy. Again, just continue playing amazing. And Baron Browning, two plus tackles for us. You've been good there this um, against the run. Keep it up. And as well, Damari Mathis, three plus deflections. Get it in the air. That's how you force some turnovers. So, for the Broncos, guys, actually, we got the Super Bowl rematch keys of the game tomorrow. That should be awesome, but... Yeah, it's all right for Sunday, though. Hope you guys enjoy the games. And, yeah, see you for the recap tomorrow. Again, stay tuned for my Monday Night Football preview as well. Lots to go through with that one as well. That's all I got for you guys. See you in the next one. Allen faking the give to Singletary. Up the side. Up the seam. Diggs going to build on his monster day. Stephon Diggs with his eighth catch. This one good for 43. Oh, you see Diggs in the slot. They're just going to get him running. A deep crosser coming all the way across, turning around the defender. He's so good when he... <laughs>